Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Oak. I'm at you once again. Today, I'm going to talk about the five best cards revealed so far for the Monuments of Power expansion coming as the extended expansion for the Targon release. This is going to be the five cards I believe have the most potential and we'll see continuous play. And the most interesting part is being able to look back at this in the future and see where I may or may not have gone wrong. If any of the cards I mentioned here you think are not that as great as I might make them seem, feel free to get involved down in the comments. We can have a discussion, we can have an argument. You can dislike the video if you don't like what cards I choose, that's okay as well. These are my first thoughts, what I believe cards are powerful, and cards that I think will see play in decks. Just to pause for a moment, I would like to say that if you enjoy the content, a like would be a huge boost to the video, so thank you so much for that. Also, I just want to mention I am streaming over on Twitch regularly. You can come check me out. You can come talk to me live. Link is in the description. There's the pop-up. Honorable mention, Divergent Paths. Now, I think although Diverg Divergent Paths is going to see play without a doubt because of the existence of landmarks, it truly comes down to how powerful landmarks are going to be will determine whether or not this card sees significant long-term play. However, three mana, draw a landmark or destroy a landmark in a landmark environment is an absolutely bonkers card. And the ability to be so flexible, if you yourself are running, running landmark cards, this carries landmarks. It also destroys landmarks. So this has the ability to make or break landmarks as a whole. This card's pure existence will determine the future of landmarks, I believe. Also, I may not have mentioned it earlier, but I'm not going to feature champion cards on this list of cards, strictly because champions need to see significant play. They probably will see play, and they won't be terrible cards, to say at least. But will they be super effective? I don't know. I just want to talk about five cards that are interesting, and the first one I'm going to mention is going to be Nopify. Not to be completely slept on, but effects that can deny effects are generally powerful. We see deny see significant play here and there. Some metas change, some metas not as so much. I think Nopify is a card that, as a meta starts to settle, a card like Nopify can start to appear. The problem is Ionia isn't really in the best spot right now, maybe least in Texas card. But this is a card that, with a very settled meta, and we're an understanding of what spells are in what decks, you can start to see where Nopify can fit into certain deck strategies. Nopify is also a quite good aggressive tool. I can see faster decks being able to skip deny, play Nopify to ignore the early game spells that interact with your board. I actually do believe Nopify is one of the best cards that has been revealed. Time will tell, I would love to be wrong, but the ability to stop your opponent's play is actually quite powerful. And what's important here is unlike Deny, this only costs 2 mana, so it is not a huge tempo loss. And the ability to spend 2 mana to deny your opponent's 3 mana play is quite effective. You know, uh, Ravenous Flock, even though it's 1 mana, being able to stop that sometimes with a, very, with a very cheap spell is not exactly the worst. There's also a tune cards that exist that can utilize cards like this uh, very well, as well as developing tempo still. So I think Nopify is actually one of the best cards revealed. I'll put it number 5 on the list because it's definitely one that is meta dependent but as I said, settled metas, players can start to abuse those decks with cards like Nopify but without further ado, we shall move on to the next card. So number 4, I would like to mention Fortune Croker. Fortune Croker is a 2 mana 2-3 two, with a play effect Deal one to me and an ally to draw one. Now what's important, most important about this card is not the damaging, not the fact that it's a two mana two two essentially. What's important, drawing cards. Drawing cards in any digital or traditional card game is a very powerful effect and being able to put a body behind it is fantastic. We have obviously seen the power of Shadow Assassin back in the day for being a three mana two two elusive with draw one, just simply draw. That's what makes this card fantastic. And besides that, this actually opens up lots of avenues to decks. 
you know, we have healing that's going to be becoming quite a popular thing. This can utilize that very well. You can play a one drop into Fortune Croaker into Soraka on turn three, and that is fantastic. Ignoring Star Spring for a second, this gives you an alternative turn two play. We've also seen some one drops that can get quite be uh, good benefits from being damaged. The zero threes I'm talking about, they can maybe start to see some experimentation, all thanks to Fortune Croaker. It activates new avenues for decks. You know, this is pretty good with like undying decks, for example, because you don't don't really mind about damaging the units. It's the draw that's fantastic. It's also extremely good for activating other cards that if they would be damaged, even into the later game, you can play this on top of it, refill your hand and get that bonus. We're talking about cards that like when damaged get like a bonus effect as well. I think Fortune Croaker is a great option to open up new avenues to deck and give them a bit more synergy and smoothness. And just, you can consider maybe cutting cards like Avarosian Sentry in your Build Water Free Old deck. And just, I think it's a fantastic card. You can ac also activate Curse Keeper. There's a lot of implications to this card. I really like it. Aesthetically pleasing, fantastic card. Definitely in my top five best cards of the expansion. Number three, one of the cards I want to mention, Dragon Guard Lieutenant. Two mana, three, two. When I'm summoned, if you behold a dragon, grant me challenger. Fantastic card. Fantastic card for a lot of reasons. Very flexible, great stat line. Challenger is quite an expensive keyword, so being able to put it onto a two mana unit with three attack, very relevant. We haven't seen too much of this at all. In fact, the only other card that I can think of right now is Boxtopus, which is not mentioned on this list for reasons, but regardless, Dragon Guard Lieutenant, you can almost ignore the fact when you behold a dragon. You're most likely always gonna have a dragon, so this is always just a two mana three to a challenger, which can trade off three mana units and trade off misfortune is the most notable one here. And just can buy time in your dragon deck because obviously dragons cost a bit more. If we had cheaper dragons, maybe I wouldn't put this card up so highly because obviously having a two mana dragon is probably better than playing this card, but we don't have any, any that exist. Just the ability to provide tempo, challenge your opponent's units, set up favorable trades, you can't go wrong with Challenger on a three attack unit. It's just a very fantastic card and it's going to carry dragons. Like if you're playing a dragon deck, you're almost certainly playing this card. I can't see a reason, pardon me, why you would not run this card. Just Twist of Fate, Fiora, Misfortune, even just like running Pale Cascade in your deck, which I think we'll be seeing quite a bit of Pale Cascade with dragon decks. Challenger GP with it. It's very fantastic i see this just opening up dragons a lot more and it's just the type of type of cards we need to see to push dragon archetype further great card very good card no randomness here fantastic second best card i think i've seen so far is actually going to be a landmark that is star spring now obviously this is probably where where i uh Either I'm super wrong or super right on rating this card so highly. What's important here is the part where it says win the game. That's what makes this card fantastic. Outside of that, round end, heal damage allies one. Then once I've seen you heal 22 plus damage from allies, win the game. I don't think you can count out any card that has that important keyword that says win the game. Uh, Fiora obviously is a fantastic card, maybe a bit easier to achieve than this one. But it's not reliant on units or combat. In a sense, like, you know, Fiora needs to challenge units, kill units to get that value. This Star Spring, you can slap down at some point with a lot of damage units. We've seen enough support behind this card to make it a thing. And I believe it is gonna, it's gonna win games. This is gonna win games. This is gonna push a archetype for sure. It's gonna carry it. I think Star Spring is fantastic. It's yet to see, you know, we're gonna have to really dive into this card play with it to see how easy it is i do believe it's one of the best cards we've seen and i look forward to experimenting with it i i i, I don't know look i just know that this has to be one of the best cards we've seen and i look forward to it and it's going to shake up the meta for sure i think it's going to shake up what people are used to and how their play styles and their play patterns this is going to change a lot of things because they're going to play units whether or not your opponent even attacks you you start to attack them 
they get favorable blocks to set up for their heals. You have to be very cautious when you're playing against a deck with Starspring. I believe it's going to cause players to make a lot of misplays and your opponent's going to get some cheeky win the games with certain healing patterns and yeah, fantastic card. Not number one, number two on my list. Let's talk about number one. Stargazer, probably one of the best cards I've personally seen from the expansion so far. 4 mana 3, 4. When you heal a damage ally, give it elusive this round. Elusive is an insane keyword. We all know it. We're all expecting some nerfs to hush. Even with hush still existing, I don't think that's enough to truly hold back what Stargazer can do. Now, I see Stargazer possibly alongside Star Spring. I also see them as two separate win conditions. It makes sense to run them together, but I also think, and this is one of the decks I've personally built and experimented with, I think Stargazer can fit into a few decks that have run some healing, probably Bilgewater and Targon. We run some healing stuff, we run all the goodies from Bilgewater that have damage on them. We get to Stargazer, Star Spring's gonna help. Star Spring's gonna help, don't get me wrong, to heal up that board on the open attack. But I see cards like Soraka and just healing in general, being able to provide that value like pale, uh, sorry, guiding touch, gems. I see there's lots of interesting things you can do with this to be able to go elusive quite effectively. And you know, that 0-3 uh, one mana card that when it's damaged and healed, granted plus attack, going elusive with cards like that. Yeah, and then you can play Fortune Croker, damaging your units, drawing cards, Soraka, refill. I think Stargazer is probably going to be a bit of a sleeper card. I definitely think this is competitive and should not be slept on, regardless of Starspring. I think Stargazer is a fantastic card and probably the best card I've seen from the set so far, not including the champion cards. But anyway, that should wrap up my list of the cards I believe are the best. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now, these are all my personal opinions. If you disagree with anything, as I said at the start of the video, feel free to jump to the comments. Just tell me how it is. I would like to be wrong about these cards so I can look back and go, huh, I can't believe I thought this about that card. Then maybe next time I can get it a bit more correct. What's important to note here is that I have an idea of doing the top five worst cards of the expansion reveal so far. So if that's something you would like to see, but drop a like on this video and I will try and upload it ASAP for the expansion releases so that we can all make Fake Hero look like a fool together. Guys, do not forget to subscribe. Thank you always for the support and I will see you soon.